open up a new uh, a new document, a new uh, artboard. And so um, there's this new document um, window, and really we're doing this for, um, it says print, but you can also choose web, and um, you can choose the dimensions. And I'm going to go with high for 1024 by 768 for presentation. And you can choose the, you know, whether orientation is a landscape or portrait. Right now it's um, on landscape which is fine, um, but if you want to do portrait size, you would choose this one, and it would just switch the width and height around. It's in pixels. You can also do inches, picas, and so on. I'm going to stay with pixels or inches. It does actually, um, for this demonstration, doesn't really matter. And then click OK, and then this is my artboard, and this artboard is uh, going to allow me to create my, um, my graphic from the butterfly. So when you go to File, you can choose place, which and this is already assuming you already have um, you already have your uh, files saved to disk. And um, what I'm going to be looking for is my butterfly. And there's two. I chose a JPEG. Okay, that's Brazil a screenshot. Uh, and um, this one's the one I want to work with. So here, when you import or place a graphic into Illustrator, it gives you a box. A blue box, um, and then inside a blue box is the image, which can be moved around. This is a raster or a bitmap image, so if I were to scale this up, it would pixelate and become jagged um, and lose its uh, sharpness, if it's sharp at all. Um, what I'm going to do is make this sharper by vectorizing it, making it a vector or scalable graphic. So one of the, the features of Illustrator is Live Trace. And what Live Trace does is actually takes that information from the raster and makes it a vector so that you're able to do other things to it. So right here is just a block um, with an image. And so when I click Live Trace, so with the image selected, and over here to my, my left is my toolbar, our tool panel, and you can see the selection tool is selected. Um, there are other tools, but for now this is fine. I also have my color. So there's the fill color, which is on top, and the stroke color, which is black, which is on the bottom. You can switch, swap, and um, flip that around, um, but as a default, this is what it is, and it's fine for this. I'm just going to make sure the image is selected, click Live Trace. Immediately, it's a default um, for Live Trace, and you can see it's made it into, it's taken all those kind of jaggies and smoothed it all out and give me, given me this kind of look. But if this is too much information taken out to make the vector, there's a threshold, which you can play with a slider. And um, if you have too much information, it may actually take too much longer to do this calculate computation, um, figuring out how to do that. So this is a little easier to see. Um, so here we have much more a bolder, uh, darker image, which is fine. You can also take it all the way up. And um, you can see a 255 on the threshold. If this is not to your liking or you would like to do other things, there is the tracing options dialog, which if you click on that, you get a tracing options box. And in there you can see that you can do grayscale or you can even do color. And um, the other thing that's cool is if you set up your own palettes in Illustrator, you can apply a palette or color palette to um, the selected graphic and it will apply the palette of colors kind of randomly to that image to bring it from black and white to color. But I really wanna focus just on the black and white for now. And there's other types of things that you can play around with in preview. Um, while you're in the tracing options box. Um, for this, I think I'm okay with the way the butterfly looks in this case. So now I have, although it does look like it's changed, it still is a blocked image, but if I want to delete, like right now you have the black, but you also have the background or the ground of the graphic, which is white. But if I wanted to put, let's say, um, a color, so a colored box behind that, it would actually not... Um, draw and make sure the color is selected and this is I'm going to bring the color palette over so you can actually see where you know these are the swatches or colors you could use and um, you can see here where that would change you know and I'll stay with that it right now has a black stroke or line around the object if we wanted to we can turn that off so it's just the fill color and that red line is what that means and I'm pasting in another image. If um, you can also bring in other objects um, to your your artboard to work with, um, which that was. 
Um, the other thing notice is that if this is covering over and not in the background, the best way to do this is to delete this and go into layers and create a new layer and make sure that layer is at the bottom. And then when you draw your rectangle, you're drawing it behind. And you can see here that um, you, the color associates with the layer and then blue is for the butterfly. So we have a box, but the problem is we have this white area here. So in order to get rid of the white background so we could see more of the green is to expand the, um, the, draw, the graphic that we have here. So we expand it by clicking the expand button. And right now it's expanded it to different points and different shapes within this graphic. Um, but we want to get rid of just of the, the white background. So under object ungroup, we are now ungrouping um, everything. So now everything's an individual shape within this sort of um, situation. So here I hit delete and you can see very easily I have I still have some of the white in the uh, original um, graphic inside of the butterfly, like the wings and the part of the body and the legs. But I also have, you know, very sharp, um, crisp lines and also can see more of the green background here. So these are the first things that learn how to do because then what happens is once you're able to have these, you have a background, you have other objects beside the butterfly, you know, there are other objects you can draw, um, such as an ellipse, you can change the color by double clicking on the swatch, um, the fill uh, box here in the in the uh, tool palette, or you can go over here to the color and, and play around with that with the little eyedropper, or you can go to the swatches and choose from there. So if I chose red, now the problem here is I still have um, this layer selected. So if I wanted to change this to, and then I would create a new layer for another object and then an object would be in front of the background and behind the butterfly. And if I wanted it above the butterfly, I would drag my layer to above the butterfly. And then I can create my ellipse and it wouldn't, um, and making sure that the layer you're in is selected, um, the layer three, and then making sure your color is what you want it to be. And also another good idea is to deselect what's on the artboard so that you're just working in the right layer. And you could also lock the layers down so you're only working in the right layer, so layer three, and you won't accidentally work in another layer. So um, with that selected, I'm going to choose a color, the red I had before, and then choose the ellipse. And so when I draw, if you hold the shift key down on your keyboard, you can um, create something that's pretty uh, round instead of elliptical. And right now it's in front of the butterfly and so if you want to change that you can um, actually go back to layers and then you know turn off turn on um, unlock your layers and then drag that layer so now the circle is actually behind the butterfly but in front of the green box and the next thing that's happening is I'm beginning to be able to move around the shapes so the shape of the butterfly now the the problem with this is now these are within the butterfly shapes if I lock these two down there are little shapes. So the problem here is that if I want to move the butterfly totally, I would have to select everything. So under select, select all, and then I want to group it together. So when I move one thing, it doesn't move. It moves the whole uh, graphic, whole object, not just one part of the graphic in the butterfly's case. So if in this case, I have the butterfly and also have this, um, which is the red, um, circle and then the green ground background. So the idea of playing around and moving around objects within Illustrator on the artboard is a way to sort of uh, apply principles that students are learning so that they can then um, move, the, create a composition, uh, create different versions of a composition using the same objects without having to redraw them over and over again or sketch them out over and over again. Here, they can just do it once and then just move it around and then save that version and then save another version and then be able to go back and make changes um, accordingly based on the feedback they get during critiques. And I find that being able to do that within a program like Illustrator is a really great way to create nice looking, sharp looking graphics. 
Obviously, I'm using existing images, but this could be photography. This could also be drawings or stuff done in marker um, that scanned and brought into Illustrator and then done this way so that you could create sharper graphics. But overall, this is really um, a really helpful way to work on composition and a helpful way to work on positive negative space. The relationship between things in the foreground versus the relationship between things in the background and all the other objects that might be in a composition so that you can create something um, yeah, something that's a strong design. Um, you can also use the text tool and the text tool or type tool is um, where you can type things on a path. What that means is there's if I sort of bring the cursor sort of over this circle you notice that it, the circle, the red circle, you may be able to see that turns green. There's a green outline and it says path. What that means is that I can actually type on that path around the circle and um, before I do that I want to change a couple of colors so nothing selected on my, um, on my um, artboard. And I'm going to choose a color that's going to be easy to see, sort of a light canary yellow. And then, make sure I do this correctly. Now, you could also create it where you create your own path for the text first over top of this so you're not duplicating anything or covering over anything like the red circle. So we'll, what I'll do is I'll create the text on a separate layer and um, just use the red circle. So here I'm just going to select it, copy it, and when I'm in layer four, I'm going to paste it in place. So it overlaps, and then I can turn off the others, and then when I'm working with the type one path, I'm working just with the path of the circle um, for its own um, here, and it's not going to affect anything for, for the uh, red circle behind it. So here, I'm just going to type in, now if I start typing, generally, you can see it does some kind of type on path, but not exactly, it types within the circle, which is not really what um, I want to do with this in this case. So if you click on T for type tool, you'll notice there's a type on the path tool, which is helpful, because in this case, what it's doing is now it's going to go around the circle. And you can um, change the size of the text just by selecting it, double clicking on it. You can change the font. Um, you can change the size. Right now it's really small and hard to see. So I do it that way. It's a little bigger, but if I go to 48 and work my way down, I can sort of see where I am. And then you can see here that um, I have something that is going to go around. If I do Arial, and Arial Black is a bold font, then I can play around a little bit with the, you know, and if you keep that there, you can change the colors. So if I want that to be blue, you can see that it's blue. If you want it to be white or a lighter color, you can do that too. And really what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm sort of playing around with that, and now I have that on the layer. So now I can um, actually rotate this so this is centered and I can space it out away from the circle a little bit more so and stretch it out just by working with the bounding box in a sense that I'm creating my design and I'm going to move that down and um, same thing with the circle that's been locked down. And I'll show you how to do that. Go back to layers, you see everything's locked down. So if I want to move the butterfly, if I move everything but the butterflies are free, well, if I lock that down, then I can move everything else up without affecting the uh, type. So that's selecting everything. So the first thing I'm going to do is move everything up in this case so you can see both the text you can also stretch the back or the ground back um, further up by clicking on it and just stretching it um, a little bit. And then um, I can also go into the to this the red ellipse or red circle and bring that down a little bit so that I have some space between the text and the circle. And I probably move this butterfly down. And then as I'm working. 
I can start, you know, eyeballing it and figuring out how this works. But then this is getting closer to um, a final composition. 